is your most important bill every single month is the bill you pay to yourself. And you've got to set that up in some account that you have really difficult access to. And you have to explain to them, I don't want this tied to my online banking. I don't want this available at ATMs. I basically need to come here and speak to the teller to then take me back to meet you in the office and sign three documents to get this damn money out because I need to be forced to save these. And if you can get a little bit of extra scratch from your employer and then you set this money aside, all of a sudden, all the other bills are where they should be, which is secondary to saving for yourself. Welcome back, guys. It's Master Keys Podcast. I'm Neil Andrino. Chandler Halliburton. And today we're going over a topic that we think everybody's a bit interested in, and that's how to save for your first down payment. As always, if you're interested in our content, please like, subscribe, follow, and you can find our long-form podcast and all that stuff. So, I mean, this one's kind of cliche and it's kind of boring, but it's an RRSP savings plan. So... Because you can withdraw your RRSPs tax-free here in Canada to go towards the purchase of your first home, getting an RRSP set up early can help. And you may have an employer that actually matches your contribution. So if you're in that fortunate position where your employer will match your RRSP, RRSP contributions, you gotta lean into that. Have them taking two, 300 bucks a paycheck and slamming it over there into your RRSP because you can double that if your employer is putting into that also. But there's an extra little trick on this that a lot of people don't know about that, that you can get an RRSP loan. And so you can go to major like wealth planning institutions or even just your bank and get an RRSP loan. And it's like anything else, it's, it's a straight loan, but it goes immediately into your RRSP. But this is something I did for my own. I got a $10,000 RRSP loan. I put it right in there. And to be honest, on the 91st day, cause that's the minimum, 90 days, I took it out and I bought a property with it because I was able to combine that with a little bit of savings I had. And Robert. in 91 days, I had $10,000 from RRSPs and a little bit of other scratch I pulled together. And that got me my down payment for my first property. Flipping furniture, we've talked about this a little bit before. In today's day and age, 2022, 2021, the furniture market was out of this world. Things were on super, super long back orders. And so people were going to the used market and the used market was crazy. People were like, yeah, it's a $1,000 in store. I'll give it to you for 950. But you could also find people that didn't really care or moving out and just need to get rid of the furniture and you could pick it up for super cheap. So basically, if you can find a piece of really cheap furniture online or you're driving by and you see it, you might be able to get a dresser for 50 bucks, maybe clean it up, paint it a little bit, or even literally just wipe it down put it back on for two, three hundred dollars with proper photos, dimensions, all the details, and you'd be surprised how quickly this stuff turns over. Rating your closet, and I know that sounds dumb, but look at this for example. Like, I've got these ponies on, fresh kicks, you know, they're looking a little bit dusty because these are old. Fresh might not be the these, word. These are, these are in my regular collection, so they're not in good shape, but there was a time there where I collected a bunch of sneakers, and so hey. I've got probably, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars worth of sneakers sitting at home in my closet, and probably another 400 sitting in the closet of my parents at their house. Um, so go through your stuff and you'd be shocked what you can sell. If you're willing to part with some of these items that you don't even have to buy them and flip them, you already have them. So like, what are your sneakers worth? What is your old clothing worth? What are you know some random collectible that you had as a, as a kid? What about your old um, sports equipment that's staying at your parents' garage that you're not it, using? It'd be real, you're never gonna look at any of that stuff again. You I always like keep it and then stuff. I'm like, I haven't opened this since the last time I moved. The only reason I opened it is because I dropped the container it was sitting in and I had to put all the shit back into it. But Man. realistically, I'm never gonna play with my Beyblades or whatever it is, Pokemon cards. Like, they're kind of cool to have. I keep a few. I always keep like one or two, but I might have like 20. I'll get rid of 18 and keep two just as like a token memento, but I'm never going to touch them again, right? No, like I, I liquidated a bunch of my stuff, some sneakers, some old albums, uh, pretty much anything I could get my hands on. And that was the second part of my down payment for my first purchase. I think it's a really neat business and it's a way to get into the business. It's rental arbitrage. There's two ways of doing this. You can go out and lease. If you see a really good lease deal, right? Shop all the marketplaces, Facebook marketplace, Kijiji, whatever works in your local area and find a lease. And you're like, man, that's under market. You can go out and rent that and as long as it doesn't say in the lease, you can release that for more money. Instantly get it released. Now you're making 300 bucks a month extra on the side. You obviously got to understand all the legalities of the leases. You got to read through them completely. But the other option too is Airbnb. I find I list a lot of my apartments and people come and they offer to lease them for five years. And what they're going to do is they're going to lease my apartment. They're going to furnish it and they're going to throw it on Airbnb. And like, it doesn't take long. Okay, you rent an apartment 1500 bucks, but in that area, Airbnb goes for 200 a night. You need a week and a half to start making money. But again, if you watch your, if you have some safeties in place, 
kind of on the contract, you understand how it all works, you could be making a lot of money. It can be super lucrative yeah. and you can use that money to eventually buy your own and then you don't have to be as worried about potentially defaulting on a lease because you own the property. And while it's kind of a risky endeavor, you can also flip it over to a fixed term rental at any point and sublet it out and feel pretty good about that. So yeah. you, you don't feel you're too, too exposed. Uh, you know, the challenge with that is you have to have the cash to, to furnish the place up front. My last good credit one, though, Leon's or someone like yeah, that will yeah, give you a line of credit. All into it. I just did three Airbnbs, it was five grand units. All you gotta do is get a five grand line of credit from one of these furniture companies or you can finance your furniture. You can also rent the furniture. You can rent the yeah. furniture, you can finance the furniture. So I, I honestly get cash up front. There's a lot, a lot of people out there who started doing Airbnb arbitrage. It's gonna sound maybe um, over simplistic, but there is a real shortage in the labor force right now, which means you may have a lot of leverage at your employer. And when was the last time you asked for a raise? People don't do that nearly enough. The yeah. reality is the people that get ahead ask for stuff. Right? If you're not asking for a raise, your boss isn't going to voluntarily give you one. So I would try to take advantage of this job market right now and see if there's an opportunity for you to get a little bit of extra cash. Yep. And maybe it's only something like you know $200 a paycheck, not, not some absurd amount, but even just that little bit. It's $2,400 a year. You know, it, it, more it's, than that. It's $4,800 a year. Yeah, it's, weekly. It's, it, it adds up over time. But what I'd also do is I would take that additional money and then I would see what else I could pull out of the paycheck and I would set it aside. Like it's so important when you're saving, you have have to pay yourself first. What people do is they pay all of their bills and then they try to keep the change and that never works. On, it's real, like getting a second job, getting an extra job. And right now the job market in a lot of places, predominantly North America, yeah. is crazy. People need people really badly. And so if you work a nine to five or whatever it may be, there will be evening positions available, whether it be at restaurants or random little positions. And people are willing to take people on as part-timers right now because they're so desperate for extra help or weekends. Like when I started, I was sealing driveways on the weekend and it was a great way to make money. I struck a deal with the owner and I was making commission off of each driveway so I could make an extra four or 500 bucks in a day. So every weekend I was making an extra thousand bucks. And it sucked because I was giving up my summer weekends to go out and spray driveways but it added up really fast and it gave me an opportunity to get a down payment together. It's, again, it's no fun, but you can't expect to just be like living this super yeah. casual, easy life and the extra money just shows up, right? You gotta put in the grind. Eventually in time, when you do this grind, it pays off and you'll get to relax a little bit later. Um, but off the start, I think you look around, whether it's serving position, like you can make crazy tips if you get a good serving position. Oh, if totally. it's a construction yeah. industry job, they're always looking for people on the weekends and evenings and random hours. Um, and there's a million little businesses that also need help, whether it be a part-time assistant in the evenings and stuff like that. So there, there's so many things you can do to make extra cash. Yeah, I, th I think the takeaway from your point though too is that people want this secret, like some easy, quick, fast secret to get that down payment. The reality is, the secret is that there is no secret, right? It's gonna be hard work. You're gonna have to put the sweat in. Yeah. But we hope that these six strategies we've given, three each, can help you and you can find some value in that. If you have, like, follow, subscribe, please. If you have other suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Put them down below in the comments. Yeah, tell us how you got your first down payment together. Yeah, yeah, share some ideas with the community. Master Keys Podcast, check it out. Thanks, guys.